Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan Slagle, who just continued our series on Breathing Room. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. So today in Postscript, we're going to look at two things. One, when does general healthy concern become a sin? And two, how do we practically go about cultivating this attitude of gratitude? Okay. So let's start with the first question. Right. Um, as I listen to the sermon and I think about um, this idea of worry and anxiety, mm -hmm. what comes to mind to me is when does my concern about something or general concern about things I have to do, um, when does that cross over into a worry or sinful type of anxiety? I mean, I have to be concerned about some things. Sure. Like I have yeah. to make decisions. Um, yeah. So how do I do that without it becoming worrisome? I understand. Um, to be clear, we are not called to a life of apathy. Okay. Uh, Jesus was obviously concerned about things. He was concerned about the lost people of Israel. He was concerned about his mission. Uh, he was concerned about his disciples, that they carry on the mission. So his lifestyle, his teaching, all of that uh, communicates to us that, that we are not to be apathetic, that there are things in life we are to be concerned about. But where is the line between concern and sinful anxiety? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. You might think about it this way. Suppose I have uh, in my hand, the palm of my hand, um, an expensive, a small, delicate, fragile, expensive vase. Okay. Well, uh, if it is fragile and it is expensive and it is in my hand, I, I need to be concerned about that. I need to be careful with it. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing there. What I do not need to do is grasp that vase to the point that I damage it, that I damage myself, that I cut myself there because of my grasp. Well, in a similar way, I think we need to hold the concerns of our lives toward God in a palms up fashion. We're not letting go of them entirely. They're, they're still there. I still have to be a parent to my daughter. I still have to provide for my family. I still have to be a responsible pastor of the gospel. All of that's there, but I'm not clutching it to the point that God cannot have access to it mm. whenever he wants and, and do with it whatever he wants. Um, I think if we can cultivate that sort of approach to the cares and concerns of our lives, we will live in that healthy place of paying attention, of being appropriately concerned, but not to the point of taking undue responsibility and then stepping into sin. Good, that's a good illustration for good. that. Okay, so we had a um, question come in here. I'm going to ask you from someone in the congregation. Okay. Um, how do we practically cultivate an attitude of gratitude without relying on ourself? So, self-reliance and the control freak, mm -hmm. that can impact gratitude as well. So how do we do sure. this without relying on our on ourself? Okay, well, to a degree, it's going to have to be uh, self-reliant. I mean, n nobody can do it for us, mm -hmm. you know. We, we've got to take responsibility for that aspect of our relationship with God. And the best way that I know of, honestly, is to practice. I, I make it a part of my quiet time to do what I did with the congregation today. Each morning that I'm with God, I go back to the previous morning, 24 hours earlier. And in my mind, I walk through that entire 24-hour period, not, not obsessively, but just thinking about the, the major points of, of the preceding day and giving myself a platform from which to say thank you to God for, for what he did because every day has new and unique blessings. It would be very easy to fall into a rote routine of thank you, Lord, for my salvation. Thank you for my job, for my family. We're going to lose interest. 
But I have found that that daily inventory of what God has done keeps it fresh for me, keeps me aware of how God is intervening and active in my life. I think beyond practice, um, we do reach a point where we develop an eye. Mm -hmm. I am a budding artist. And I mean like barely budding artist. Here at age 52, I've decided to take up painting and drawing. Not that I have any skill, it's just something I wanna learn to do. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm learning as I read books about how to do this is that an artist learns to see the world differently from everybody else. You learn to look at it and discern things like depth and perspective and nuances that otherwise you would just completely miss. Well, it's the same with gratitude. If I am working on being a grateful person, as I move through life, I'm going to notice things. I'm going to notice, wow, my three girls are healthy. Hmm. What a blessing that is. Uh, I'm going to walk through life and realize we have never missed a meal, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, going overseas can really heighten that, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But it can even get right down to the nitty gritty of things. You can go for a walk one day and in a parking lot full of concrete, suddenly there is life. A, a flower is uh, poking itself right up through a crack in the concrete and you realize uh, beauty is everywhere. Mm. So you give thanks for that. Um, I think if you're intentional, if you practice and you look for it, it'll happen. Good. Well, thank you for the message today. Sure. And I am grateful for you thank and you. for the message that we had today. Um, and so you'll be back with us again next week yep. as we continue Breathing Room. Yep. Um, so keep your questions coming and join us back here next week for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.